Oh, so that's how you record a video. Well, hi, and uh, welcome back to Rot Leech. Now, I think it's been nearly about nine months since I made a video. And you might remember last episode, if your memory goes back that far, I was saying something about instead of doing the stupidly, massively, enormous, amazing project that I wanted to do, I would realize the fact that I have human limitations and time, and would instead do something smaller, um, but in that same kind of style that I was hoping to do. Well, I kind of changed my mind and went ahead with the big stupid thing. This is a project with a lot of history behind it. Lots. It goes back a long, 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 long time ago, way back to the early days of Minecraft when you know, like a new happy Minecrafter I am, I'm thinking of all the things I want to build one day, and all the things like you do, you think, oh, I could build something that's piratey, like a pirate ship, I could make a castle, one day I'll do like a snowy themed build, like, you go through all the things you want to build, something deserty, and of course, naturally, somewhere along the line, you need to say, I need to build an underwater base. Now, there's a problem, because I envisioned for my underwater base that I wanted to build something, that cool sci-fi theme with airlock doors that go whoosh, and glass tubes, and kind of beepity beep machines, and this council of lords who rule over this kind of city civilization thing. Um, that kind of style. But for that, I wanted a lot of vertical, like you got this, and then you got elevators that go up to other layers, and other layers, and other layers, and this was way back before they invented the deep ocean biome, so we only had the regular ocean biome, which is pathetically shallow. Which means that if I want to build, I might be able to get like two stories, um, and then suddenly that's just not enough, and I'm ducking my head to not stick above the sea. I want it to be like deep, deep underwater, because that's amazing. Um, so I came up with thought of various solutions to the problem. I mean, one of the obvious things is get a section of ocean and blow up the bottom of it, mine it out. But that would be a real pain in the butt to do, wouldn't it? Um, the other option was to... I thought I could extend the ocean, put more ocean on top of the ocean, surround it with a wall or something, and do it that way to make it deeper in that spot so I could have enough depth. And then from that I thought, if you're going to make the ocean deeper, why not just forget doing it in the ocean and just do it in the middle of a forest so you get that nice foresty grass colour and make a massive hole that and build, I guess, kind of like a gigantic fish tank, which this kind of is. Um, this is the second time I've actually attempted this project. So the first time was back on Cosmos Season 2, which I ended up only making one video on, and that was about another project. And I got actually a fair way through that project in terms of, actually, I built the entire glass tank. I haven't finished that here, obviously. You can see it's this main wall is done, but not much of the sides and not much of the roof. Um, so, so I built the whole thing. I didn't finish flooding it. But even that, that was massive. It was 100 blocks by 100 blocks, all the way down to Y, I think about 30 or something, and all the way up to like where the clouds go. And even that, I'd started building some of the buildings inside, and I was thinking, this is still a little bit cramped. I'm too close to the walls. There's not enough space for expansion. So this time, when I came back, and with the aquatic update coming out, that was like a big inspiration. Let's do the aquatic thing again. This is Neptune, Mach 2, and it's... Bigger and better. It's 166 blocks by 166 blocks. Here's my amazing airlock, by the way. It clicks to let you know it's actually doing something. 166 by 166. It all goes down to Y... Y29, I think, and then even deeper in these ravine sections. And it goes up even higher, almost to sky limit. So there's 11 panels of glass high um, from the base level. Uh, 11 panels up. Each panel is 16 glass high and there's blocks in between. You can do the maths. Um, the amount of glass and concrete that goes into this thing is phenomenal. All right? Mind-blowingly. Like, whole chests do a scanty amount. And then I've got to fill this whole thing up with sand and this lovely terraforming work I've been working on and is looking so beautiful. Um, I've got to do that. Uh, and then I've got to flood the entire thing all the way to the top. There's a lot of work to do. This massive hole is massive. I dug it out all by hand using beacons and haste, but no explosives. Actually, they might have done a little bit of explosions in one section, but it really wasn't that helpful. 
and a couple people helped me for once in a tiny section, but again, mostly it's myself. Let's look at my statistics. Uh, items. Uh, times mind. Stone. I have mined uh, 891,000 stone blocks. That's a lot. And that's just the sand. I've mined to build it. 61,000. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, crafting. Let's have a look at the concrete because that's important. I think these get confused because originally it counted white and black concrete. It only counted the one. So most of the white, con white concrete is actually black concrete. So that's 7,000, 11,000, 20,000. There's a lot. And that, that's glass. I have placed 43,700 glass blocks. And you can see this thing is a fraction of the way complete. Um, resources are ridiculous. Again, it's taken me nine months. So yes, this airlock, I should point out, because I kind of just ignored it. Um, if you've watched my airlock video, you might recognize the way it works, but obviously it's a bigger sort of door. So I just use that same logic with the bigger sort of door. I think that pretty much explains it. And I added these observers to do the clicky noises when it drains. So you go in here, it all drains out because it just takes such a long time. And if you weren't and you're standing on the outside, you'd think, is it opening? What's happening? So it makes clicky noises. And yeah, Whew. it's amazing. Um, right. And obviously the, the inside flow doesn't look so neat and nice because this entire thing is not filled up with water yet. Let's have a look at the ravine and some of the terrain I've done because it's beautiful. Actually, I might have a have a sleep. This is like a mini airlock, which is how I get into like the, the base working section. Or it will be when it's everything's working properly. At the moment, it works. So this is like my, I guess, base of operations. I've actually been tidying it up. I built a fancy sorting system, which I think is amazing for helping me store stuff. What was I actually doing down here? I was going to sleep. All right, let's get my thoughts organized. So yes, I dug down to Y29, I think I said, and then I used a heck of a lot of TNT to blast out like a ravine kind of structure. Oops. Um, which you saw, and get this guy out of the way, and I'll just pop up. So this is where the ground level was at one point. Not originally, I dug down and then I had this tower sticking up to where it was. It's a good place to observe it. I've got this lovely volcano. Um, yeah, so I blasted out all that, and that's very coincidentally, and in quotes, obviously it's not coincidental, follows the course of where the river biome was. So I, I specifically built this thing over a river, so a big section of forest with a river going through the middle, and I built this ravine where the river is, because the river is the biome where drowns will spawn, and fish will spawn, and squids that don't spawn down this deep, they'll spawn higher up. So I wanted to get those things spawning because it's underwater and I want to have life underwater. Um, so I did that and I thought I wanted the drowns and creepy stuff to come up from the depths. So I made this section deeper and it goes down to various depths. There's these lovely little alcoves of the prismarine, which I really like the, the style I've got here. Where it's mostly stone with patches and veins of kind of the andesite, which in my texture pack is kind of has this bluish tint, which lends itself well to the underwater vibe. There's occasional magmary caves and seams, and it's amazing, and it's just crazy, and yeah, obviously sand in the big flat stretches. And there's also these kind of veiny, viney kind of bits of the cyan terracotta, which are again slightly blue greenish tint, and adds extra texture and character, which I really love. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just take you through some of the more interesting places. So again, this was just a heck of a lot of TNT blowing up the basic shapes and then I went all over it and tidied it up, smoothed it out a little bit, added these bits, shaped it off, sculpted it a little bit. But I mostly worked with the kind of the way the TNT worked. I mean, I used the TNT to work the way I wanted it to work and then worked with that. So yeah, there's a couple little caves, which again, there were just natural caves here, which I just incorporated and then I flooded the whole thing. So this is the very deepest spot. This is where, like just below here is bedrock. And this was like, the river did a massive like wide pool. So I wanted to make use of that by going extra deep and wide. So I did. Um, and in blowing up this section, I accidentally blew up the beacons, which were over there somewhere. So whoops. I do want to use one of the beacons in the future. Um, but yeah, I'll have to work on that. You got this cave which kind of winds through from this section over to this other section. I'm about to start drowning. 
So it's it's beautiful. I won't take you on a full tour of everything. I've got bits that are arches. Again, this whole thing is going to be underwater. So this isn't where the, the shoreline is. This is just the edge of the ravine in certain parts. And it goes up a bit in places. And like here, I've mapped out that I want the cliffs up here to come up kind of higher on that side of the ravine. And here it's kind of lower, but it does things. It's all really nice. All these corals, these are special. So these are like, again, big chunky man-made corals and there's actually cave spider spawn that's under them so each one has like about eight little tubelets that cave spiders will pour out of when you're nearby and they'll just float up majestically in the water and drown so it's kind of adds a little bit of life i guess to to everything um yeah so there's a bit of a debate that i had was do i do all the terraforming and then flood it or do i flood it and then do the terraforming so like i built all the lowest their row of glass panels around so that I could flood it up to there and then do the terraforming which is what I was thinking and it's 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 a it's a trade-off it's there's pros and cons each way because it's much easier to build underwater because you can swim around you can go under things more easily uh, you don't have to worry about all that I think there's a slime under this hill again most of this is hollow under there um, yeah um, so yeah it, it is kind of nice when you can do that but at the same time if you've got like stuff that's underwater and then you're building underwater you create pockets that aren't actually source blocks and it's kind of hard to figure out where those are whereas it's, it's easier to get them in when you flood everything afterwards and you can make sure you get everywhere but at the same time it's also more of a pain to do that because you have to make sure you get everywhere when you're not placing it blah blah blah, 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 blah. basically it's a pain in the butt either way so this is kind of how, how I've, I've gone with it it's another cool little cavey bits over there i really like this bit where it's like a bit and there's this little chink down there where it's full of that prismarine stuff again and everything is beautiful like I, i'm just loving how many different all these little details all over the place is what i like and you know there's spots where there's ores there that's just natural ores there and i left it because it's beautiful i built this archy kind of bit over here so you got this cliff again on this side and remembering that again this isn't the water level the water level is up the top so this is just where it comes up to you so far. But you've got this ledgy bit and cliffy bits and archy bits and these alcovey bits of prismarine. And it's beautiful. And so yes, this is all the work I'm doing with just the, the landscaping and building the thing. That's just to build the environment in which to build the actual underwater base itself. So this is crazy. And you can see why it is such a stupidly massive project. Again, I'm, I've been mining all the sand naturally. I'm not using like a sand duper or anything. So yeah, yeah that's crazy. Um, I, I set up a shop at Spawn where people can mine sand for me and I pay them a diamond block for every shulker box they fill up and about, I think I've probably got about a total of five boxes out of that which is, is nice, but it's just a fraction of the, the entire amount of sand that I need. Um, yeah, I didn't think about slime spawning inside the hills, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, So this volcano was kind of nice, there was a big cave, one of the natural caves under there under the ground that went down and so I thought if I extended that up we can make a nice volcano uh, I don't know what the best way to actually get in there is climbing up the side or just rip tiding myself in properly except I can't quite reach so yeah I'm real professional I have totally planned this all out in advance uh, right Blap. Um, there used to be a way around here there we go. So yes, uh, the actual ground level, it was, I think, somewhere around here. And then the cave went down to lava. So I did that. I added these kind of magma seams, which are nice. There's lots of these spots where you get that water sitting up the top, which means I have to go around the outside, outside, inside, the other side, and put blocks in there. And you can stop that from happening. But at the moment, it's kind of a pain to figure out where without flooding everything, so I'll probably wait until I've finished the rest of the terrain and the flooding around it, because some of the water around the outside will also help that. Um, yeah, so we just did that. And yeah, there's kind of a big vein of the prismary, prismy, prism, prismaticness, which has magma running through it, like cleft in the side of the mountain. It's all beautiful. I love it. It's amazing. It's a heck of a lot of work, but it's cool. Um, this is actually the Cosmos Season 2 world, where I first tried building this wonderful construction of Neptune. So, 
Let's, let's just have a bit of a comparison. Um, obviously there was no black concrete back in the day, so all these outside pillars were obsidian. Yes, that is insane. It's obsidian. I ended up building... This is when that bug worked, where you can use redstone and you pour lava on that and it can turn the redstone into obsidian. It's kind of a glitch, just because it was a pain to go out and mine it all. Um, wow, that was a pain. There's my little inn, which is like where the nether portal is. So, it, like I said in last season, I really like it when the portal's actually outside the place. So when you have a fancy entrance, in this case an airlock, you actually get to use that. Um, you can see the airlock is much, much bulkier. And it's a much smaller door. So this is like, if you watch my airlock video, this is like the deluxe, in quotes, version. And it's all this massive mess. So that's just how you had to do it that time. Or if we didn't have the lovely note block button, so you had to chuck a thing on there. Um, the circuit. Uh, I think a lot of the actual circuits that I had in the newer version could have actually worked. Because we did have comparators back then. There's actually two things now back here. You had to have one for going in, one for coming out, just to make it confusing. It still works, I think. It's just, yeah, not as efficient. Ooh, I should probably give myself some of that respiration helmets and stuff. Anyway, let's just go into spectator mode for now. Um, yeah, so you can see some of the buildings that I had. I won't go into too much detail on those because the designs have changed, but uh, if I give myself... Oh, I do have respiration already. Oh, I'm in spectator mode, duh. Never mind. Um, why is there cactus doing weird things? It's probably because cactus worked differently now. So I had some underwater cactuses um, to be like corally things. And so yeah, so this is all the terrain that I had back here. It's pretty sad. Like, it's a nice underlying landscape, nicely done. Um, and there's these little patches of fancy corally bits, which I did with end stone and hardened clay. And they look quite nice, but it's also very sparse. Like, compared to the new one, this is just a little bit... It's a bit lacklustre, to be honest. Um, it's just like all the smooth, rolling hills of dunes. There's no mountains or cliffs or ravines or anything. It's just... It's, it's what it is. It's fancy. But it's not that much. Um, the outsides, you can see I only had the vertical pillars. I didn't do the horizontal ones. It was just a design change. Um, the other thing is lots of the framework for the actual buildings here was coal blocks. And this is one of the big reasons that made me kind of stop working on this. Just because it was getting so much of a pain to get that much coal. And I was just, yeah. I got a lot digging out the area, but it just wasn't enough. And yeah, it was a real pain. And so that was one of the big factors towards me abandoning the project. Um, yeah. So like, as a thing, the airlock, look at the size of this mini airlock. This is like my... Again, if you haven't watched my airlock video, watch it because it confirms things. Um, we didn't have observers back then, of course. So this is like the size of and similar function to my mini one, and it's nearly as big as my new deluxe one. So there's that. You can see how that's changed, and it's the same one of those that I have down here to get into the mine base under here, which is a little bit less tidy and fancy than my newer one because I, I learned some things. Um, yeah, so I have this massive pillar of resources from the digging, whereas now I've sorted them out into different categories, which is good because otherwise this stuff gets really untidily done and you get everything mess messed up and you, you don't use your space as efficiently. Either way, it's pretty awesome uh, what I actually had going on here. This is a really cool feature which might not, probably doesn't work because I had snow golems in here. Oh, there we go. Some of them are here. And that would cause these little things. You know, we didn't have, like, bubble columns back in the day. So I did this thing where this, these things would spit snowballs out. And because it was based on the snow golem's movements to randomise, it would do it randomly when a player's nearby. And I think I had a switch where I could lock it off. And stuff to refill it, which was a pain. Yeah, these cacti are not surviving now. That's kind of sad, because I thought they looked like cool little sea cucumber -y things. But yeah, they... they, they don't live underwater anymore, apparently. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, these things would spit out snowballs, and there was two of these only. And just two, that's all I got. Um, and I might still have some things like that as well. Um, again, the new bubbles are nice. And I'll be utilising those in a lot of places, but I'll have to do... There's a lot more. I've got grand ideas for the new one, which will look a lot fancier than this. Obviously, you've seen it already. It looks a lot fancier than this. It's amazing. 
But this is still pretty nice and it's good to remember what it came back. This is kind of, I had a zombie spawner in here, did kind of a similar thing to I was trying to do with the spiders, but this one's, there's just four spots for them to spawn, it's not very effective. Oh look, it kind of works. I think that's it going. Um, it kind of works, it doesn't appear to actually be working, but it's supposed to, you know, the zombies float up and they just kind of die, which would work interesting now with drowns and stuff. Anyway, uh, right. So, but you can see, this is the size of the building I had. This is like the main hub, and that's like the council room, and already, like, this is fairly close to that wall, that's getting fairly close to that wall, that's getting fairly close, it's like, still feeling a lot cramped, which is why for the new one I went a lot bigger. And obviously I didn't finish flooding it, I was going to do this all in one big thing, just finish up that seam and watch it flood in, and yeah. I did have grand ideas about maybe coming back here and creative and finishing it, but then that's when... Update Aquatic was coming out, and I was inspired to redo the entire thing from scratch in survival again, and make it bigger and better, which is what I'm doing. So I'm really glad, and for as massive as this thing is, compared to the new one, it's just amazing how much different, because it's more than half as long again, and way, way taller. So it's kind of amazing to see that as comparison to this, which I thought was so massive, to see the new one, which is so much massiver. But with all that said, uh, I think that's about enough ranting and storytelling for this episode, and um, obviously there's more I could go on about what I've been doing in the meantime. When I've worked, I've worked on a few other things like my Trident Farm, the Guardian Farm, not that exciting. Um, I finished the daycare off, which actually needs some maintenance now because we did an armor stand cull, uh, well, entity cull, which got rid of some of the armor stands, so I kind of need to fix that up. And I also haven't bothered. And there's other stuff that's happening, but I'm not going to bother showing you right now because this is what I'm working on. Um, and I think I've kind of explained myself enough as to what's going on. I've shown it off, and it's beautiful. And I guess get ready for another episode in another nine months or so. <laughs> yeah, but th thanks for watching and, and listening. Um, and hopefully you can feel inspired to go and build your own massive project. Maybe, maybe next time, if there is a next time, I'll like show you a bit more about the how and my process for actually doing all this landscaping stuff. That could be interesting to watch. I don't know. Anyway, uh, b before I get, record so much stuff that I've, it actually becomes a pain to edit and then I don't edit it and then I ended up discarding this footage and having to record it again in another nine months. Um, see you later. Thanks for watching. If you watched, thanks for listening. If you listened, um, bye. Did I have a fan? No, I never had a fancy thing I said for outros. They were just always awkward. Okay, note to self, trim that awkward silence, it's too long. <laughs>